Hey everybody, Jason Cooper here from Kickstarted the Movie, uh, the documentary feature about crowdfunding that's coming out later in 2015. I am back doing another weekly rendition of our conversation with ongoing crowdfunding campaign creators. Uh, we call it Funded Friday. And I am really happy to be joined by Dr. Veronica Vasquez, who is one of three mommy doctors, which is the name of the company, who is currently running a uh, crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo, raising money for, I would call it, a new generation of first aid kit, uh, specifically targeted at treating children. Um, and, uh, and Veronica, rather than have me butcher what it is exactly you're doing, why don't you just go ahead and tell us a little bit about uh, Kids Dad and Baby Dad. Okay. Um, so, you know, we're three ER doctors. We're moms. And so... I think a couple of things that we first, what got us started on this journey was having our own kids and also seeing kids in the ER and realizing what was out there and available to parents. And, uh, you know, a lot of things come into the ER in the middle of the night or come in, you know, either they should have come in sooner or they came in too late and realizing that, you know, we're at an advantage being, being physicians, but also still being sort of in the dark uh, when it comes to being parents for the first time. Um, looking at the kits that were on the market, there's a lot of first aid kits out there. And when you go through them, there's a lot of things that you realize that you don't actually use. Um, one of the things we make a joke about is that there's always like a thousand alcohol swabs. And what do you use those for? Nobody's going to wipe a cut with an alcohol swab. It hurts like crazy. And it's kind of useless. And you have like 30 of them in there. You also have like 30 small band-aids that are round, which, you know, the only time you actually use those or when you're in your pediatrician's office after you get an immunization shot. So they're kind of useless. And we're like, wow, this is crazy. This is what's available to parents. And it's chock full of these things. And, you know, little by little, we realized the things that we had in our own house, things that we had in the hospital, the things that were really useful and cool in terms of bandages, things that stick on kids, things that actually last and don't hurt. And we started putting these kids together. And, you know, being physicians, we have people who um, who come in and uh, come to our houses and ask us for advice. And, you know, can you, can you take a look at this? Can you take a look at that? And realizing, you know, we got to put something together so that parents have these in their homes themselves. So in KidStat, you know, first started off with KidStat because that's usually what parents, you know, come to the ER for, cuts and scrapes, wounds. You know, can you take a look at this? It's infected. Is this, uh, does this need stitches? Should I have called 911? Should I have come you know, to the doctor's office? Could this have waited? And then around this time, um, you know, I had my first child. And I think one of the glaring things that I noticed was that people assume that because I was a doctor, I'd know what to do. And I had no idea, honestly. I was like freaked out of my mind. I remember going to my OB appointments and my uh, OB saying, well, you're a doctor, you know. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I've never had a kid before. I've never been pregnant. Um, and that's where baby stat came into mind because I thought, geez, this is, this is priceless. You know, you rely on the, uh, on the advice of others and you realize by trial and error, the things that you get at baby showers or, you know, that are given to you that work and don't work. And very quickly you realize how a lot of things that you have when you bring a baby home are sort of useless in the same way. And the things that are, that are priceless, you know, at six months, gosh, if I had known that sooner when I first had this baby, that would have been awesome, you know, what a waste of time. And there's a lot of crying um, by both parent and child when there's a newborn. And uh, so we just thought, let's cut all that out. Let's get people this information sooner rather than later. Very cool. So just to summarize it, because I love that you gave us the story of how it came about. These are basically specialized first aid kits that are taking out of the equation the archaic version of the first aid kit that everyone probably has in their house. And it's and it's specialized from the perspective of of a parent that's going to need things to to probably solve the little problems that kids are inevitably going to have, whether it's a you know a scratch or a, a cut or whatever is happening in the daily life, correct? Right. And I think uh, one thing that's really unique about our kit, we spent a lot of time uh, making these instructionals that would be very helpful. So at the, on, on each kit, there are red flags, and uh, for when you need to go to the ER, when you need to call nine one one. Uh, when you can't wait, when you can't handle these things on, on your own, and that's at the forefront. So if this is what's happening, you need to go. Um, and then there are other things that 
step by step in terms of if this is what you have and, and you know they're each separated into sections so in, in kids that we have uh, bites and burns um, aches and sprains and uh, cuts and scrapes and so with each with each section there's a list of instructions on how to handle a burn things that you need to worry about how to dress a burn appropriately in terms of cuts and scrapes how to look for foreign bodies um, what kind of materials that are in the kit that you could dress the wound with um, and aches and sprains like how do you recognize that something is broken um, what can you do there's a, you know we have a sling in one of them to, to get you to the ER so lots of things in terms of not it's not just the materials themselves it's how to use them and um, when to seek further medical advice the same goes for baby stat that's that's separated into three sections as well um, and again step-by-step -step instructions that we wrote ourselves of things that we see all the time in the ER um, giving people advice and, and knowing how to use the kit and how to move forward well very good. they're great products and I would imagine there's a huge need for it just as someone who knows people who have kids and considering myself like I think the day-to-day management and freaking out about whatever, you know all sorts of things is it's great to have a resource that's there to help you do that um, and it's a product that needs to be improved on so let me ask you then you guys created this idea you created I imagine a prototype or for yourselves or for your friends what was the point where you decided oh well, this is interesting let's turn it into a business and put it on uh, Indiegogo how did that happen you know, it's been a, it's actually been a really long process and, you know, we would go back and forth with ideas. We went through multiple iterations of the kit in terms of the packaging and what's useful, what's not useful, what's cool, um, what's new. And, uh, you know, finally it's been, you know, two and a half years of this process. We realized, you know, we really, we really need to get this out there and we've had a lot of advice and one good piece of advice that we had from somebody was, you need to nail it before you scale it. And so we realized, you know, we have friends and family, and we obviously believe in our kit. We think it's great. We think it's phenomenal. It's something that we would want in our homes. Um, but you have to get the advice and the opinion of others and really see, like, is this something that people really want? You know, I think it's useful. I think that seeing the patients that come into our ERs, if they had this, a lot of things could have been avoided or could have been improved upon. Um, and so, you know, we thought about, how should we fund this? Should we, you know, it's been a lot of personal investment and time, time more than anything, but a lot of, you know, a lot of our own money and thinking about should we find investors? Should we, you know, go for a loan? Should we, um, um, how are we gonna actually fund this project? And then we started looking into crowdfunding and we thought, wow, this is awesome. It's giving people like us the opportunity to be entrepreneurs and start a business and take a risk um, and get feedback more than anything from a community of people and see what people want. You know, is this something that they want and need in their life? And, you know, we uh, decided to go with Indiegogo and it's been phenomenal so far. That's great. So the question that comes to mind is someone I've run a campaign, I've, I've talked to people all the time or in the midst of it. You guys are all practicing medicine and are mothers of presumably young children. There's a lot of work that goes into running a campaign. How are you managing it? What have you sort of, did you, do you have an expectation going into it? What would be required? Are you finding it difficult and time consuming or has it been easy? It has been nuts, I'm not gonna lie. We all work full-time jobs. We work in multiple hospitals. I have two small boys. Uh, Sarah and my partner has three small boys. Uh, Misa Home, our other partner, has a boy and a girl, all school age, and I will tell you that this is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and we joke about it, but our prime time is from 9, 8, 9 p.m. to 2 a.m., you know, after the kids are asleep, after the work is done, you know, your work that you get paid for, um, that's when we, we do the bulk of our work, at night, after our jobs, and so, you know, there's little sleep, a uh, little time to eat, and, uh, but it's been worth it, you know, you you really feel after the long haul, you're making something happen, and it's really exciting, and it really is starting to feel like, gosh, this is worth it. This is, it's all paying off, and it's it's very exciting. Interesting, and so I, I can totally sympathize with the amount of work and lack of sleep, and I did a campaign where that was all I did. Um, so I imagine that it, doing it in your scenario is that much harder. Um, what, what have you learned sort of about your product? Because it, it sounded like you went into this for funding but again, as you mentioned before, you sort of wanted to figure out is this something that the market wants? Are you learning about 
whether that's true, are you learning about how to market your product and how to position it? Are you learning things that you might change about it before you end up scaling even bigger? What, what are sort of things you've picked up in the few days you've been live? Um, realizing, I think the most exciting thing is that people are, are we're getting great feedback and are excited about it and want this product. Um, I think uh, in terms of the comments that we're getting that are that are private and that are you know sent to us from from people either through via email or actually on the site in terms of things that they'd like in the future um, you know that was one of the things we thought about in terms of well could we add this and could we add that you know there's a lot of medical legal aspects to this where we you know there's some things that we would, would love to have but you know our kit is FDA approved and in terms of you know there are there are certain things that are restricted but knowing, you know, in the next phase, okay, how can we improve upon this kit? What are some of the what are some of the things that we'd like to incorporate before we go into mass production of this? If we are so lucky to do so. Cool. Well, let me ask you this then, I just because you, you're not a marketing professional, you're not. There's a lot of people that kind of come to crowdfunding and sort of have that knack. They're like, all right, I know I have this great idea. More importantly, I know how to sell it, and they get huge amount of push and they're able to sort of roll naturally into that. And then there are people like yourselves who have a passion or an expertise and have a great idea but are sort of learning the other side of it. I, I'm just assuming that so maybe that's not, maybe you guys are marketers. But what is it that you've, what maybe not struggled with or what are you trying to figure out? What's, what are, for people who are in your shoes considering projects for themselves, are there things that you would recommend that they do or are there things that you are learning that aren't working or that are working? What's been the experience in terms of that? You know, I will say that we've been very fortunate. And I think part of that has been that there are three of us. And so reaching out to personal contacts, because you're right, this is not our trade. We're physicians. We are not business people. We're not marketing people. You know, each one of us was on a one social media site prior to this. And we're like, well, who knows Instagram and who knows Twitter and who knows, you know, Facebook, all these other, you know, social media sites. But in terms of having a marketing plan, we this was all new to us. And it's been trial and error. And we've been really fortunate in the people that we know and that we've reached out to and sort of realizing like what it takes to be successful. And you're right. We look at these other campaigns and we're like, that's amazing. And some of those things take, you know, a lot of these people are, it's their second campaign. And so that offers hope too in terms of, you know, we, we talk about this a lot. I wonder how their first campaign went and how different it is the second time around. And wow, look how much they've made this time around and how quickly and, you know, they're 250% funded. Um, but I think, you know, I, I think people get really discouraged. And I get, you know, from a lot of my colleagues at work, how did you guys do this? You guys are like full-time moms of young, young kids. You're working full-time. You're at academic centers. You're in, you know, in busy community ERs. How did you do this? And I would just tell people, like, if you really believe in your product and you believe in yourself, you will make time and it can happen. And, you know, it's been a long haul. And but from the very beginning, we said, we're going to give it a shot. We think this needs to be out there. And I think people will want it. And if it was all said and done, it doesn't come to fruition. Well, we tried. And, um, you know, Indiegogo is really giving us that opportunity right now. So that was a fantastic answer, I think. For me, the thing that I took from that more than anything is that you had the passion and sort of belief in your product uh, enough to get behind it and, and do the work, um, which is, uh, I think, is a really valuable trait uh, in any creator. So uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this then. What is your, you know, beyond your goal financially, you guys are a flex-funded campaign, so you're going to make, you're going to make money to, you know, to get this going no matter what. Uh, you guys are still short of your goal, but you have plenty of time. Um, you've only been up for two days, so I think that you guys will have a huge uh, successful campaign in the end. But what is your sort of vision beyond the campaign? What do you want this to become? What are you hoping to get out of it beyond just the you know thirty thousand or whatever you end up raising? Yeah, you know, I think for us, I think the most important thing, I think, in raising our children, and for me personally, I just feel it's such an advantage in terms of knowing the medical aspects of caring for kids. It's so hard and so difficult and so challenging in so many ways. You know, people tell me, gosh, you're a doctor, that must be so hard. I'm like, that's easy compared to how strenuous and taxing and challenging and difficult and frustrating raising children can be. And if you're in the dark about knowing how to take care of little things, 
uh, you know, it just we, we really feel like every parent should feel as prepared as we are. I mean, yes, you're, you know, you're not going to be prepared for everything, but there are certain things that you can you can learn about and you can be prepared for. And we really just want to give people that same comfort. We really do. You know, we, we try to provide it for our friends and family, but we want it, we want that to, to extend beyond. So wonderful. Well, I wish you the best of luck and I thank you for joining us. Uh, again, guys, the project is called Kidstat and Babystat, and you can find it. Uh, we'll put the link below in the information of this video, but also if you go to Indiegogo and search for Three Mommy Doctors, uh, you will find it there as well. It's a really cool, great product, probably a must have if you're a parent or thinking of becoming a parent in the near future. So, Veronica, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jason. Great. And for anyone who's interested in more, crowdfunding stories, uh, please subscribe to the channel or check out our uh, website at kickstartedmovie.com where you can find out about our movie that's coming out about the crowdfunding revolution and sign up for updates about that. Thanks a lot.